My name is Cal Moliney from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today I'm here with my good friend, Tora. And she's going to be starting the Liberate Family Freedom Gatherings here in Richmond. So the go-to person along with Courtney as uh, to help uh, with the peaceful parenting aspect of this movement. And because this, uh, this whole integral is a big part of uh, the anarchism uh, project here that we're pushing forward here in Richmond. So thank you for watching. Thank you for enjoying this content. Please share and subscribe. And see you at the victory party. You still have to pay your taxes. If you did have a freedom of economic choice, it wouldn't threaten to send you to another cage if you didn't pay your taxes. Do you jail people? What do you mean? Like, do uh, you jail people? Do I jail people? Yeah. I mean, the government does, do you? Right, so we can get to that point. We, but that's, but, but, but that's the point I want to get to. The government has a monopoly on law. They have a monopoly on security, on roads, and courts, and judges. You can't opt out, unsubscribe, or have the freedom to provide a better service. It's not going to be harmful or abusive to the consumers. Don't we need to jail people, though? You can, the restitution would be paid directly to you in a free and voluntary society. You won't have a prison and just uh, system that, that exists today. You'll have a polycentric legal system outside of their monopoly on law. Oh, who jails people? Say again? Who jails people? Uh, whatever you, uh, contract that you have that you sign up for. For example, you can have a Thunderdome community. It says if you aggress against a person, the outcome of this would be you know, two may enter, one may leave. It could be a pillow fight. It would be whatever contract you explicitly sign instead of a social, social uh, contract that doesn't really exist. Well, that sounds good. Are you, are you an anarchist or libertarian? Yeah, anarchist. Well, I used to consider myself a libertarian anarchist. Sounds but, like it. Yeah. But all right, so for the most part, like this moral position, though, you and I already share in the initial uh, questions against using violence to solve problems. That's called anarchy. Definitionally, like in science, anons and canons, and means without, archy means rules. Like monarchy, one political ruler, anarchy means without political rulers. So we can still have rules. We can still have a polycentric legal system. We just don't need strangers arbitrarily dictating what best... But if it's libertarianism, then doesn't that mean that you have corporations? No, without government, there's no corporations. All a corporation is is a piece of paper that allows you to escape personal liability for your actions. Right. That's granted and enforced by government. Sorry, not a legal corporation, an effective corporation. Uh, no corporations. It's just be a regular business, how it used to be. Where you're responsible, you're held liable for your own actions. It used to be that way, especially before prohibition. Uh, people who made uh, quality good alcohol, uh, that stuff was, they branded their own stuff and they were held liable if they were to cause sickness or illness. Um, is the is the free market still going to exist? Uh, well, we don't even have a free market. So this would be a free market. You want a free market? Yes. This is a state-controlled market. So you wouldn't have permits, licenses, things that uh, discriminate against the educated uh, poor. Okay. You wouldn't have, uh, you know, we don't have 40-50% back of your income back return to you. You wouldn't have a monopoly in currency where it loses over 97% of its value. You'll have um, a freedom to actually choose as you would any other product. Um, do you ever think of the free market as like, uh, like nature or like like the wild or jungle or something? Uh, I would consider it as a uh, it's cooperative, pretty, pretty free, right? Yeah. So is the jungle, right? No, I would say uh, the difference between the free market and the jungle is that in the jungle, it's a lose-win relationship you have with everything in that jungle. You can't negotiate with the lion not well, to eat not you. True. It is true. You can't negotiate with the lion not well, to eat you. I mean, a gazelle can't say, hey, let's barter and trade. But, but, I mean, it's not all everyone against everyone else. Like, ants and trees work together. But mentalism. Mutualism. Well, I'm saying that the difference between the two is that in a free market, it's a win-win situation. Most Everything's a trade. You want, I want your shirt for five bitcoins, you want my bitcoins for your shirt. Well, what about exploitation? Uh, what define exploitation? Um, okay, sure. Um, uh, people in a system uh, don't have the economic resources that other people do. There's no wealth redistribution system, which means that Certain people get screwed other over, while other people get uh, well. Distribution system, you mean that? There's no way. So uh, there's no system where you steal other people's property to give it to other people. Um, uh, and yet the thing you're talking about, people don't have resources. This is why you you create work, right? But okay, all right. So let's say that you own uh, a business, sure, and you give it to your kid. I have, yeah. Um, that's just kind of giving something that someone did not earn to someone. So if I am rich and I give money to my child that's just perpetuating uh, a new feudal state, and I don't know if that would be good. What do you mean a new feudal state? Well, because if you have people that are essentially born into power, then I think that that's bad. And I think that that would arise. What power do they have, though? Because money. you don't have any government to bribe, you have no one to bribe, no money, corporations. Money is powerful in a free market. In a free market, it's the consumer that has all the power. And it'd be in the same way where the Netflix, for example, try to raise their prices overnight, and people say, cancel, unsubscribe, that's, go to Hulu. That's very idealistic. It works, it just happened last year. That's not idealistic, that's realistic. 
well, I mean, it's very, it's very idealistic, but you... If Idealistic would be that thinking that 3,000 years of trying to hit your head over to government and thinking <laughs> redistribution of wealth is still going to solve these problems. That's idealistic. Um, I think that what is also idealistic is assuming that doing away with the system and going towards the chaos, anarchy, is going to solve it because you can't have an effective system that actually works out if you have no regulating factors. Do you think I mean, this is an effective system? Well, over a million people in cages for think, victimless crimes, I th I th uh, drone bombing children overseas. I think that that's a false dichotomy because just because you say that the system is imperfect now doesn't mean you have to throw it all out. I mean, sure, it sucks. Yeah, it, I hate it too, but we can't just throw out the entire concept. That doesn't make sense. Well, okay, these are the same kind of arguments a lot of slave owners had. Well, you can't just end the institution of slavery. We've had it for, <laughs> for a long, long time. You know, where are they going to go? Where are the slaves going to go? Who's going to house them? Who's going to feed them? Who's going who's gonna to give them jobs? Okay, who's going to sure, the car? It doesn't time, matter what happens after the right. institution of violence, then you free up a free plurality yes. of markets for people to find. Like, I could also say that the economics, the educational system is very much screwed up, so why don't we do away with education? The public sure. indoctrination schools? Yes, place the monopoly on schools that they have. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just in the same but way, for example, if you have a business like Walmart has a school, the only thing you'll learn is Walmart ethics, Walmart policies. On the wall, you'll see Walmart presidents, and that's all these public indoctrination schools are. You only hear about government stuff. You don't hear about the opposing, about the philosophers that they made sure you don't hear about, like Lysander Spooner trying to compete against the United States Postal Service, their monopoly and first class mail. You don't hear how they drove them out of business because they want to have an exclusive monopoly on delivering pieces of paper, parts of mail, which is why now they're $16 billion in debt. This is why Detroit has filed uh, for bankruptcy, unfunded liabilities. You can't keep stealing people's wealth and call it distribution and think that this is going to solve these problems. Violence cannot solve complex problems. Um, I, I think that violence cannot solve complex problems, you're right. Um, I guess, I guess that just my main point is that um, I don't think that there's ever been a system where you haven't had government, at least when it comes to humans. All right. So I would say one, I don't think that you have any evidence that your system would necessarily be better. I could give you I, I could give you one right now. Okay. Largest one of the largest employer in the world has over 100,000 people. It's called eBay. There's no government there. There's no criminal justice system. They have a great dispute resolution organization, and that the community ostracizes the bad, the bad egg, the rotten egg, the person who wants to sell a bad product, the person who sells a, a product that doesn't arrive in time, it broke quickly. They're rated down, and you have the freedom to compete and provide a better service. Um, now eBay is a massive system. It's it's actually really big and it's a great, very successful corporation. But it's not, let's say, uh, voluntary world world market large. So it is. People sell stuff from Japan, from uh, Europe, from I mean, South America. I mean, it's it's not. Um, let me say, uh, it industry large. I mean, it's big, but it's not big like you know, GDP is big. I I guess what I'm trying to say is that if you were to take eBay and make it bigger and make sort of, I guess, the power structure uh, more appealing to people, make people willing to cheat the system in order to get ahead of eBay. I don't think anyone's willing to do that now, but who knows. Then I think that you would see different things come to play. What you're looking at is a small system, but I mean, if someone could get away with, I don't know, selling beverages on eBay, and it's cheaper to put rat poison in the beverage, then I'm sure that they would do it. Because I, I don't see why they wouldn't. All right. I'm saying maybe there should be someone who regulates not putting rat poison in drinks. You can still have private dispute resolution organizations. You can still have security. You can still have polycentric legal system. You can still have all this stuff, but on a voluntary so basis, that you can choose right. who provides that for you. Um, okay, so that's that's a good point. So let's say that we have uh, uh, a system that you can voluntary, voluntarily choose to enter. Yeah. And but I mean, the system has you know collections of power and collections. Of collections ability to do things, regulate things. They have to. That's how a system works. Um, let's say that, that one particular system is like way bigger than the other ones. Sure. Um, and then what if people feel almost forced into the large but maybe crux, corrupt system because they're more economically prosperous? Because right. Who knows, maybe the wealth is flowing more towards the top. Right. What do you do then? Uh, well, if there's no, uh, well, violence is fine as placing a person in an involuntary position without their consent of choice, i.e. rape, murder, theft, and assault, anything can go. 
as long as there's no violence, as long as no one's being uh, aggressed upon. If someone wants to live in a community where nobody believes in property rights, go for it. If they feel this is not the community for them, you're free to voluntarily leave and go maybe start up your own community or maybe join a different kind of community. You'll have a free plurality of different preferences of communities. An apartment comp building that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. It does sound like the libertarian ideal. Um, all right, just one more question. Please, please. Um, okay, so let's say that you have a whole bunch of uh, economic systems that people can voluntarily join into. Um, what happens when one of them acquires, let's say, a paramilitary or something like that? Maybe even a police force, you know? Okay. Um, and then let's say, what if they were to uh, invade some sort of land okay. with a lot yeah, of oil? Yeah, yeah. Um, what happens if they got a monopoly on some natural resource? All right, that's, that's all right, great question. All right, all right. So uh, a lot of historical examples here. Yeah. Uh, one, there's no facts or evidence in the history of any business or corporation being able to take over a geographic region without the support and assistance of a government because they haven't been big enough. Right. Well, they can't get big enough because the, what, what they need from is the tax system. Government is the only one that has a monopoly of force, so they can steal that wealth to fund large standing armies, to fund Blackwater. I mean, their money comes from government grants that comes from taxation. Mm -hmm. Without government, you don't have a tax. System. This is why Hitler wanted to take over France so fast is to take over the existing tax system to help fund his war machine. Yeah. So in a free and voluntary society, there's no taxation. No one can really try to build up a massive amount of uh, armies or uh, militaries, for example. Uh, you'll still have private defense organizations. You can see this one. One exists for today uh, in Detroit because Detroit has fallen for bankruptcy. It takes over an hour for the police to respond. There's this guy. Uh, it's called Viper Threat Management Systems, and he actually provides real security to these neighborhoods. Uh, crime has dropped down, and these neighborhoods are finally paying for his security. Uh, and so it, it's and that's and something like that exists today, right now. He's been doing this for a few years now. In the absence of uh, government not being able to provide that service that they force on you to accept. There's a, there's a concept that I remember. I remember hearing about a few years ago, so excuse me if I don't have the terminology right, but it was like um, op open or free citizenship. So it'd be like uh, you have, uh, you, you can choose your citizenship uh, for any particular country you want to. I think is that that's what it was. It was, it was a concept that, um, which I think was interesting, right? So if I didn't want to be a citizen of the United States anymore, I could go join China or North Korea if I really yeah. wanted to, who knows. How would that be any different than the system that you're proposing? Uh, all right, so the difference between uh, a lot of this sort of stuff, contracts would cease to exist. I mean, no, they're nothing but arbitrary lines on a piece of paper. Uh, so you wouldn't, I mean, they're nothing but tax farms right now. So we see a lot of people trying to expatriate here, but you're just going to another tax farm. And the thing is, you just, you're just running into one cage into another into another. So what ended up happening is you have a plurality, because we realize here, especially in the uh, North America, the government has a monopoly on so much land that's, uh, that's open, well, then will be open to homestead. Right? Mm -hmm. So much land for people to, to, to appropriate and to homestead and to create their own communities. Uh, and then eventually you get to the point where you realize, you know, the uh, trying to redistribute the wealth to, for example, to NASA, and now NASA's uh, starting to fall, uh, the space program is starting to fall. So you, you free up a lot of uh, venture to actually explore maybe other areas of land that you can kind of homestead off of this rock. Uh, you know, finally maybe get off of Earth and try to appropriate all their land. So I don't really think that land is so much of an issue in that particular um, area. Well, uh, I don't know if we entirely see eye to eye right, right, right. On, on economics, but if you want to um, uh, get into uh, space exploration and asteroid mining, I think that's great, and I think we can agree on there. Yeah. <laughs> all right, hey, all right man, you too, man. Oh, oh, can I give you some pamphlets then? Sure. I yeah. think uh, you've enjoyed some of these. Only in particular the... Uh, peaceful parenting aspect and so in the back of here a lot of good economic books uh, help me out of my allegory of government and politics um, if you kind of enjoy yourself cool. and uh, here's a list of other YouTube videos you might enjoy thank you thank you camera and that's the hidden violence behind government and that this organization only knows how to solve problems though through one way singular way and that's the threat of the use of violence to solve any problems versus a plurality of nonviolent solutions that us three here already share. What are your thoughts on that? Well, how do you, like, how, what, like, nonviolent solutions would you suggest okay. that we could use as, like, a larger community rather than just, like, through personal problems? All right, great, perfect, okay, all right. Um, I guess so, that's a great He's question. So excited. All right, so, uh, <laughs> I know, like, the magician. <laughs> great, <we're> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so you look what government is. Government is, uh, has a monopoly on services that they force on you to accept and force you to pay for. You have no freedom to cancel, unsubscribe, or even have the freedom to provide a better service. It's not going to be harmful and abusive to the consumer, right? So government has a monopoly on law. 
They have a monopoly in court on judges and security. Um, well, uh, well, they, they create corporations, right? So without government, there'd be no such thing as a corporation. All a corporation is, is this a piece of paper that allows us to escape personal liability for their actions back to enforced by government. So without the government, corporations like Monsanto cease to exist. All right, so in a free and voluntary society, you'll have a, a myriad of different ways to kind of solve these problems voluntarily. Uh, but I guess going to that point, I guess my, my, the magic I'm trying to show is, this moral stance that us three here already share against using violence to solve problems, that's called anarchy. Like in science, yeah. anions and cations, and means without, archy means rulers. Like monarchy means one ruler, one political ruler, anarchy means without political rulers. We can still have rules. We can still have a polycentric legal system, we can still have security, we can still have all these wonderful stuff, but at least you as a consumer <coughs> to decide who can best provide you that service to meet your preference. So we can have a plurality of rich different communities of preferences. You can have like an apartment complex building that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. All right, different rules and different ways that we can all kind of exist because through government, that people have to force their preference onto each other. The majority of preference onto the minority of preference. And then it becomes a political war between each other. You're a Democrat, you're a Republican, you're a Libertarian, Green Party, all trying to fight, that, trying to get the hand of power to government so that other people are not forcing their preferences onto each other. And that's pretty much where it's gone to in the past several thousand years. Uh, so it's a solution that you're mentioning, like all the things we can do. So you're like in Detroit, they fall for bankruptcy, right? Outside of that bankruptcy, because government becomes unsustainable, that they start to collapse, it takes like over an hour for the police to, to respond to 911 calls. There's a guy who created his own security company, private security company. These neighborhoods are paying for it. He's not throwing anyone into a cage for a victimless crime. Crime rates have dropped down. Uh, and so that's a great example of how this, this could can be provided. There's another guy though, because mass transit also has shut down in Detroit. And so this guy, 25-year-old uh, college dropout, bought, bought these four buses, painted these buses to reflect the geographic regions of his neighborhood, and these buses will pick you up wherever you are. There are there's Wi-Fi on these buses. There's music on these buses. There's B Y <laughs> Yeah. Oh, here there's B Y O B on these buses because there's no monopoly on law, right? <laughs> and they'll pick you up, call them, text them. There's no centralized planning routes. So it's, it becomes a lot more free or creative, you know, outside of what government provides. Because I think when you realize what government is, that they don't really create anything. They outsource that already to businesses to do it for, for you. But you don't, have, you don't have the freedom to choose, right? Like Netflix, for example, last year tried to raise their prices overnight, and people are like, oh, forget that, cancel, unsubscribe, go to Hulu. Yeah. Right? At least in the power is in your hand. The moment a, a business is doing something you don't like, sorry, you go bankrupt tomorrow. But then you can have the freedom to provide something better than, than you know, freedom to compete. And uh, so that's, that's the solution. That's the, uh, let's turn to our community and turn away from that that contradicts our moral values to begin with. Yeah? Cool. Any more thoughts, questions? Are you with like an organization? Yes. Uh. <laughs> a part of an organization is a non-political organization. It's called Liberate RBA. Liberate our community from the idea that violence will set us free. And not just state violence, but the violence we do to each other. And especially the violence done to children. Spanking only teaches children that violence is a way to solve problems when we grow up. Nietzsche. Nietzsche? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, it does have a lot of quotes you against the state. a lot about instinctual violence and like things like that. Yeah. And I think it's very important, especially uh, for, for, the, for the youth, because that's where they grow up and learn about this. And that's where we legitimize this, this system around us. Uh, this, that's where this culture of violence comes from. Um, and I'm not trying to judge parents or anything like that. You know, I talked to my own mother, like, why did you spank me? And she said, well, that was, she, she herself was spanked. And that was, that was the handbook that was given to her. Right? So I'm just trying to let's break free from this cycle of violence and support and let's head to something better. You know, founded on real value, something on a real foundation for equality, for freedom. Um, so I have pamphlets you guys would like. Sure. Yeah. All right, cool, cool. Where are your friends? Hold on, wrap it out of a hat. He's over there. <laughs> <laughs> Anarchy. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Of course, of course. Thanks. Yeah, uh, so we meet monthly. Uh, we have a uh, freedom gathering next Friday. Just potluck. A lot of people, other anarchists, is uh, community discussions and how to uh, solve community problems outside of government and trying to go to that better place. Because inevitably, Richmond's also going to fall away of Detroit. Uh, there's a lot of cities in California already fall for bankruptcy. San Clemente is next, Philadelphia is next. This is why Europe is falling. Uh, because they also have a monopoly on currency. The dollar in your pocket today has lost over 97% of its value because they have a monopoly on that. You don't have the freedom to exchange in any other currency but the US dollar. There's a guy who tried to a few years ago called the Liberty Dollar. IRS came in, seized his asset, threw him in a cage. Uh, so that's that's what happens with that, that, that hidden violence behind yeah, the monopoly. Uh, <laughs> I, I know, them. right? <laughs> they really do, they, they do, they do. Oh, okay.
So uh, well, thank you for uh, humoring me and asking Thanks. me and thank you for enjoying this uh, for magical show. <laughs> well, my name is Cal. I'm Krishma. Krishma. Pleasure to meet you, Krishma. I'm Jasmine. Jasmine. Pleasure to meet you, Jasmine. So uh, you guys take care. Well, I'm going to pretty much be here every day, uh, every afternoon or so. So if you have any more questions and like uh, different realms. Because I was studying criminal justice here. Uh, so for me, like it was hard to think. Are you a student here? Uh, what was it? Well, I guess I'm taking the semester off. Uh, yeah, the last semester realizing I can't, I can't really uh, justify spending, you know, another ten thousand dollars on like on the stuff that I'm not allowed to think outside of the box. Because uh, you have a monopoly in logging, so you're not allowed to think of a polycentric legal system. You're not allowed to think of uh, alternative dispute resolution organizations. Um, but like a great example of this is like eBay. Uh, you go to eBay, hire so many different businesses and different people all over the world. There's no government there, no criminal justice system there, but they have a really great dispute resolution organization. You sell a bad product, a bad service, people rate you down. You're socially ostracized. Right? There's no one else that needs to be involved there. You socially say, I will not do business with you. You seem to have a bad reputation, bad ethics, bad whatever character. So naturally, we kind of socialize the, the people who want to aggress and want to steal. And in a free society, that's pretty much how it would work. That would be this pretty much the best self-defense against anyone would be aggressor. You know, where are you going to go if you're aggressive against any member of our community? You know, it's going to house you, feed you, clothe you, invite you to their homes, invite you to their diners. Um, you know, your AT&T service provider will pay you $150 to cancel their contract because these are voluntary interactions, right? And that's how uh, you'll, you'll find a lot of people who are prone to violence. It's like, well, it's beneficial actually for me to engage and be civilized. You know, have a lot more to, to, to take in, a lot more to, to experience uh, being civilized. And the fact that we actually prefer to talk and using violence so we have a preference for morality and non-violent solutions. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, you guys take good care. You too.